playmates and I want to follow up a little bit on my cool blue refrigeration install and a couple of things I learned that I think might be beneficial for you now once you get the unit installed which you know if you follow this link here you'll see how easy it is to install it the key is make sure that the fittings are tight enough not over tight but tight enough well I was so cautious about not over tightening them I didn't have them tight enough so within a couple of days all my coolant ran out and I had to recharge the unit and it's easy to recharge the unit too and there's a little sight glass it's the way I have my unit set up you know it's high in the um, lazarette so I needed a mirror and a flashlight to check for air bubbles you know they're not really air bubbles what that is is uh, coolant that hasn't turned in it's liquid that hasn't turned into a gas yet though it's, that's what those bubbles are it's not air bubbles so to recharge the unit what you need let me grab this okay well what I did is per recommendations if you're not sure how much it charges if you overcharge it that's as bad as not having enough charge so here at the saline emporium they had a vacuum pump and I, I would just drain the system out and then you add two cans of the 134A make sure it doesn't have a leak uh, thing in it you know or a, a, uh, any kind of additives to it like on some of the car ones they have uh, leak sealant or something like that you don't want that you just want the straight and the this had a gauge with it. You don't really need this. Uh, you don't need the gauge. The other thing you're going to need, though, is a Snelling adapter. Now, it comes in a package. There's like five different ones, and it, it will go on to your compressor. I'll show you here. And then this snaps onto it. And that's what you're going to find at most of the uh, auto supply stores, and that's where you can buy this coolant. So anyway, I get that snapped on. You want to keep this up. You don't want liquid going in there. The pump will pull all of this out. Now it took me about, I don't know, 8 to 10 minutes per can, maybe 12 minutes. Maybe it was even 15 minutes per can. I don't know. Once you put this on, whether it's this one or the other one, don't take it off because once you take this off you see the hole here there's no way to seal that so when you have this on now this particular one had a trigger so I had to keep holding the trigger the whole time so that the unit could suck the um, refrigerant out of the can and you know you can shake it you'll, you'll feel uh, when it's empty now the other one that just had the twist cap, that would have been a little bit easier because here I had to hold this the whole time. The one with the twist, I could have set it there and just kept an eye on it. So that's, you know, for future use. Now also when you release, when you take this off, regardless of which one it is, there's still going to be a little bit of pressure in there. Don't, you know, hold it away from you uh, when you take that out. So here's a big recommendation once you get your unit set up run it for a couple hours then check it with and I use the bubble method I use the bubble method and what you, you don't just use plate soap you take a little bit of soapy water and you see the see the bubbles I have that will stay on the pipes and if there's a leak you'll see it this will this will bubble up even more uh, but just to be on the safe side of things, one of the um, technicians here also had a electric sniffer. And that was really nice. It goes beep, beep, beep. It's got a little probe and you put that around and if there's any leaks, you know, it just goes crazy. Which I had already done the bubble thing. I just used that to double check everything and everything was nice and tight. Let me think what else I want to tell you about this thing. Oh, yeah, while you're charging it, have the compressor on low. I mean, it's going to take a little bit longer to suck both of these cans out. But 
that's what it's recommended. So I did that, I ran it on low, let it run on low for a few hours, and I moved it to three quarters, and I kept checking it, and every so often I would go down and I would get my mirror and my flashlight here, and I would check uh, for the bubbles in the sight glass. Now I still have like what they call a BB in there every once in a while. Hey, as long as the unit is charging, I'm not going to screw around with it and try to put another ounce maybe of this in and wind up putting two or three ounces in and then overcharging it and have a bad system again. Right now I'm running at number five out of seven and my box is uh, 35 degrees and below where I've got where I set it up for freezer 15 degrees. I think I'm good to go now guys. But it's important to you know read that manual. I mean that was really good. Again, I'll put a link in this video too. Download the manual, read through it. You'll see how easy this is to install and easy it is to troubleshoot. Just I, I, I don't know what I was thinking not to double check my fittings after I ran it a little bit. I thought, well, hey, I got them tight. I got them tight double check yourself. Well guys, that's kind of the update on this. It's running good. I've got refrigeration now, so happy and safe boating to you, your family, and friends.